Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to this episode of Microsoft Project Made Easy combined with project management tips this time around. This is really covering off two things. One, how you can schedule in Microsoft Project some of the things you need to think about. But if you're just learning Microsoft Project, you might want to go to my Microsoft Project's tips playlist and start at the beginning, video one, and work your way up. That way um, it's not so advanced for you. This isn't really so much on using Microsoft Project as it is in really understanding how scheduling works in scheduling software and some project management tips, particularly related to construction management. So in the screen here in Microsoft Project, I've developed four scenarios. And my discussion today is really gonna be about the advantages of going with small batches and less wait time, less work in progress, and to have a more continuous flow on your construction projects. These are all lean principles that I'll be discussing today. And you'll see some of the advantages to thinking this way. And you can also see how using a software to run like a sensitivity analysis to ask questions and to answer can give you a real visual as to what makes sense. So scenario one, it's a pretty simple scenario I'm running with this. I've got uh, footings queuing, and I'm calling it footings queuing because this one's really about uh, doing big batches and wait time. And so if I open this up, let's say that we have to excavate 10 footing pads, and they're very large footing pads, and we figure they're gonna take 10 days to do that. So we've gotta excavate 10 footing pads, and then we've gotta install the rebar in 10 footing pads. And so using the, using the queuing method, which is very common in construction, is like, I want this area, this is ours, we're gonna excavate it all out, and then you can bring in whoever you want later, right? Um, so that what that means is you've gotta wait though, those 10 working days, 10 working days, and then the rebar uh, subcontractor will come in and then they're, they're gonna start to do their rebar for another 10 days. So the total time period for that is 20 days. So then you gotta ask yourself, well, what if we could do it with smaller batches? What if we could do it with smaller batches? Not 10 footings. Let's try scenario two. All right, so we're gonna excavate footing pads. And this time what we're gonna do is we're going to do um, two pads per day, all right? So we're gonna do two pads per day, and once those two pads are done, the rebar installer is gonna start to install it the next day on those two pads. So they're really just waiting that um, two days there before they start, and then it starts a waterfall or continuous flow effect on the project. It's really a, a linear flow to the project. It's really got what they call a tack time to it. Tack time's like a rhythm to it. You know, you finish this, that happens. This continues. It's got a nice rhythm, even velocity flowing with it. So instead of it now taking us 20 days, it's now taking us 12 days. Look at the time saving, comparing this to this, right? Huge. So the question is, um, oh, well then you might think, okay, well you're doing two footings a day, what would it save if we do one uh, footing a day? Doesn't have as big a savings going from uh, the uh, two to one. It has a huge saving going from the 10 to the two. This will save you another day. So then you have to rationalize on your project, right? So you go one, one, gets, one pad gets dug, the next day one gets installed but you have to rationalize how much space do I have? Do we have room for the excavating equipment in here to do uh, two pads per day? So in other words, while the, next, the excavator is excavating the next two pads, do we have room for the rebar installer to be installing it there in a safe manner? So is there that capacity of space? Uh, and if we do, well, this is making a lot more sense because there's another thing that you also get going on here. If you do all 10 footing pads and then the rebar installer comes and they double check the measurements and they see something is off with the excavation for the 10 pads, then you gotta go and you gotta get them all fixed. They've all gotta be reworked. If they're not big enough, they've gotta be dug out a little bit more. 
If you do it this way, well, you've only done two and you're going to get the feedback within two days. So after two days, that feedback is going to come pretty quickly. So you don't wreck the rest, the other, the other um, footing pads going forward. You get much more quicker feedback. That's huge in construction, getting very quick, instant feedback, dynamic feedback. So we can pivot, we can adjust, we can continuously improve. We have less rework. That's big uh, from that perspective. So you might wonder, all right, well, maybe we should think about this. Maybe we should also check maybe another scenario. I'll just roll this one up for now. Um, scenario four, maybe we decide, oh, well, what would it be if we did it with five footing pads? Because maybe we decide, oh, these two, there it's a little bit, because safety comes first, maybe it's a little bit too close. Let's go with five, and then we'll have the next five, and then we'll have the next five. And then that actually cuts it down pretty substantially from scenario one as well, because scenario one was 20 days. This is cutting it down to 15 days. So you really have to think about how many things you've got going on on your projects. Are you doing a whole floor of something before the next trade comes in? Can you break that up into smaller compartments, zones, smaller batches, have more feedback, have the project flow much more better? And scheduling software like Microsoft Project can be really helpful in just, as you could see, running different scenarios and figuring out what's right for this area that you're wanting to reduce the batch size uh, so that you can also reduce the queue size. You have less work in progress at any one point in time. Improves a lot of things that way. So hopefully that's given you uh, some insight of batching queuing, the importance of looking for smaller batches, keeping in mind safety, spatial requirements, but feedback as well, continuous improvement, a more even flow, a even rhythm to the work that you're doing. There is one more thing I did want to mention. So these are, as I, as I was kind of alluding, uh, lean construction methods. And so sometimes when I just sort of quickly say lean construction methods, I lose people. Like, what do you mean lean? That sort of thing. Well, lean was developed out of uh, the Toyota production system. It goes back to quality improvement that was instituted from the 1950s onward. A lot of the principles came out of Japan with how to make quality improvements and the whole production system that evolved into the Toyota production system had a lot of value to the manufacturing processes. And it's all about adding value to the client while reducing or eliminating waste and trying to have a more even flow to the work. In construction, we suffer greatly from having workers wait for work and work wait for workers. There's a lot of stop and go, stop and go, and you add up all these stops and goes, there's a lot of wasted time, money, resources, and clients aren't happy with that. So we have to make a lot of improvements and we have to change the way that we've been doing things over the last 50 years. We haven't evolved as an industry as much as we could. But on the positive side, we are on a tipping point. There is a lot of change happening in the construction industry right now. It's a very exciting time uh, with the convergence of building information, modeling, uh, lean construction methods, advances in all kinds of technologies, and we're going to see a lot of change. And some of the things aren't that complicated, as I was just demonstrating. This is just one way of thinking about a project. The next thing is to coordinate it and to get it coordinated well and make it work with the trades. So I hope you'll join me in future videos as we dive more deeply into project management tips, lean construction methodologies, and we look together as a community for the best way to do things. I'm Tom Stevenson. I'm hoping that uh, this helped you. Please uh, click subscribe uh, for more videos like this and the notifications icon. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm happy to try to uh, reply to as many comments as I possibly can. And if you've experienced some of this on your projects, please comment on that as well. I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.